Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose in our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been with me since day one, welcome back. This is our weekly Sunday devotional, and today is Sunday, February the 6th, and our topic today is entitled New clothes, new clothes. And our foundational text is found in Ephesians chapter four, verses 22 and 24. So we're going to read this devotion through one time, and then I'm going to go through it a second time. And we're going to underline and highlight and pull this apart and um, go through some extra additional features that I did see in the Bible that we're going to be reading from, which is the everyday life bible by joyce myers this is the bible i've chose to do my devotionals out of okay so let's say a quick prayer and then we'll get started heavenly father i thank you right now lord god for your mercy and your grace i ask for forgiveness for all my sins lord known and unknown lord god i ask right now heavenly father that you impart and ascend upon us the spirit of wisdom the spirit of understanding the spirit of clarity the spirit of knowledge the spirit of discernment and the spirit of revelation i ask right now heavenly father for whoever is listening to this devotion that you open their spiritual eyes so that they may see and open their spiritual ears so that they may hear we thank you right now for you holy Holy Spirit, to teach and guide us and lead us into all truth in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's get it, y'all. I hope y'all are having a beautiful Sunday. Okay, it's the beginning of the week, but we about to get into this. Let's get it, y'all. So again, it's called New Clothes, and the scripture reads, Ephesians 4, 22, 4. It says, can y'all see? Let me put you down a little bit. Y'all know me. Okay, here we go. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self and to put on the new self. And this is found in Ephesians 4, 22, and then 4. But we're going to read Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, okay? So here I have it in the scripture, in the scripture, in the Bible. And this is Ephesians 4, Okay. And we're going to read verses 22 through 24. And then we're going to read this other. So you got a little treat today because I'm going to read a little extra. Whatever I find that pertains to the scripture or the devotion, I'm just going to read it. So here we go. This is the scripture. It says that regarding your previous way of life, you put off your old self, completely discard your former nature, which is being corrupted through deceitful desires. That's why you got to put off your own man. 23, and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude. Come on, 24, and put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature created in God's image, God-like, and the righteousness and holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation. My God, come on, Amplified. I love the Amplified, y'all. Y'all know I do. So then when I turned the page, I seen there was a life point, which we are going to read, which is right up here. So let's read that and then we'll get into the devotion, okay? This is just a little extra, but I feel like it's pertinent to the devotion. So it says in Ephesians 4.23, we read that we are to be continually renewed in the spirit of our minds, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude. Attitudes begin in the mind. Our minds are renewed by the word of God. Reading the word daily renews our minds and changes our attitudes. Renew your mind in the word today, okay? Which what we're doing because we are in the word, right? And then this whole little, 
article or whatever this is in here. We're going to read this and then we'll get into the devotion. But because it was dealing with Ephesians 24, I mean, 22 to 24, I thought it was right on time for what we need to be reading. So let's just read it. It's just an extra help. We can't go wrong, right? So here we go. It says Ephesians 4, 20, 22 through 24 teaches us about the connection between our thoughts and our actions. Verse 22 says we should strip ourselves of our former nature and discard our old unrenewed self. Verse 24 continues the thought and tells us to put on the new nature created in God's image and the righteousness and holiness of the truth. So we see that verse 22 basically tells us to stop acting improperly. And verse 24 tells us to begin acting properly. But verse 23 is what I call the bridge scripture. It tells us how to get from verse 22, wrong actions, to verse 24, right actions. And be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished, mental and spiritual attitude. It is impossible to get from wrong behavior to right behavior without first changing our thoughts. A passive person may want to do the right thing, but he will never do so unless he purposely activates his mind and lines it up with God's word and his will. Come on, Joyce. An example that comes to mind involves a man who once got into the prayer line at one of my at one of my seminars. He had a problem with lust. He really loved his wife and did not want their marriage to be destroyed, but his problem needed a solution or he would surely ruin his marriage. Joyce, I have a problem with lust, he said. I just cannot seem to stay away from other women. Will you pray for my deliverance? There go that word, the spirit of lust. He was trying to get cast out of him. I have been prayed. I have been, I have been prayed for many times, but I never seem to make any progress. Okay. And then it says, this is what the Holy Spirit prompted me to tell him. Yes, I will pray for you, but you must be accountable for what you are allowing to show on the picture screen of your mind. You cannot visualize pornographic pictures in your thinking or imagine yourself with these women if you ever want to enjoy freedom. Why? Because that's opening up a door to the portal for the enemy to come in, right? We don't want no doors open, right? None. That's how the enemy get in. Here we go. It says, like this man, others realize that they are not experiencing a breakthrough even though they want to be free. They want to change their behavior, but not the thinking. If you desire to act differently, you will have to start thinking differently because your behavior starts with your thoughts. Wrong thoughts lead to wrong actions, but right thoughts leads to right actions. Simple, simple instruction, right? Change your thinking by what? Renewing your, renewing your mind to the word of God, which is all true. All right. Here we go. Pull you back up a bit. Now let's get into this devotion. New clothes. So now we got a better breakdown. So let's see what this has to say. Let's go. Whoo, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. I love the Lord. Okay, so this is our N word. It says, living the Christian life should become as natural to us as changing clothes. We take off the old and we put on the new. The old may have been comfortable, but it is dirty and horribly out of fashion in our new kingdom. The new is the permanent style of the kingdom of heaven, and it will cause us to resemble God increasingly. Our responsibility is to continually shed what is no longer appropriate and put on the clothes we have been given. But many of us walk an unwise path. We claim citizenship in the new kingdom, but continue to wear the fashions of the old. And trying to fit in everywhere, we find that we fit in nowhere. We may blend into the old kingdom, but we no longer have proper ID there. 
We have the proper ID for the new kingdom, but we're slow to fit in. Either way, it's an awkward situation to be in. What is our reluctancy? I mean, why are, what is our reluctance? Why do we hesitate to put on our new clothes? Because we know we will experience rejection and no one likes rejection, but rejection will come to everyone either from the world or from the kingdom of heaven. This question is not whether we can avoid it, but who's we want to but who who's we most want to avoid. Wisdom calls for a choice. Trying to address for both kingdoms is not a viable option. Mm, mm, mm. Now let's read indeed. Are you reluctant to place both feet firmly in the kingdom of God? Do you try to hang on to remnants of your former citizenship? Let them go. Shed them like an old set of raggedy clothes. The way to settle into your new kingdom and advance in it is to be reclothed. It's a, it's a daily process. We deny deceitful desires, verse 22, and saturate ourselves in a new attitude, verse 23. We become like God in righteousness and holiness, verse 24. There is no greater wisdom than this. My Lord and my God. Come on, y'all. Take off that old man and put on the new, right? Let's go. <clears throat> Woo. Holy Spirit leading God is today. Teach us, Holy Spirit. Amen. Here we go. <sighs> it says, um, living in the Christian life should become as natural as us changing clothes. We should be living in God and our Christian life should be a lifestyle, right? It should be a lifestyle, just like changing clothes. We get up, we wake up, we change our clothes, and we go on about our business, right? It would be strange if we would wear the same clothes every day. People are going to be looking at us like, what is going on, right? Same thing spiritually, right? If you claim to be in Christ, you're not going to be acting the same way you were when you were in the world, when you was under Satan's control and influence. You can't be a child of God. You can't serve two kingdoms. Basically, that's what it's talking about. Once you have been reborn, it's going to be hard for you to want to do the old things you used to do if you're really applying the word of God to your life. Amen. So it says, we take off the old and we put on the new. Easy, simple. Get out of your old way of thinking and start thinking like Christ. Get a mind of Christ, right? The old may have been comfortable because that's all you knew. So it's going to be comfortable, but it is dirty and horrible. And they according it to fashion. So you out of date, you wearing bell bottoms, people wearing skinny jeans, right? So you out there looking crazy with your platform shoes on, right? Mm -mm. So you're, you're looking dirty and horrible out of fashion in our new kingdom, right? You can't bring that dirty, filthy mind into the kingdom of Christ because he's holy. You can't be thinking like that no more. That's why you have to read the word to renew your mind out of them old ways. It says the new is the permanent style of the kingdom. So now you got to start thinking like how Jesus thought, how God thinks. And that's the way of the kingdom, heavenly, righteous. And it will cause us to resemble God increasingly. Bam, there it is. Guess what? Our responsibility is to continually, key word here, mean ongoing. We are to continually shed what is no longer appropriate. So all that stinking thinking, believing the lies of the enemy, um, speaking other than what God's word says we are, we're not stupid, we're not dumb, we're not poor, we're not... Um, perverted. We're not sinners. I mean, we are sinners, but I'm saying we don't have to be sinning, right? We were born sinners. We know that. But we have to take that thinking out and know that we are forgiven, but you have to do your part. And it says, put on the new clothes you have been given, which is your new mind of Christ, right? Put on your new clothes, your new man, the one under the kingdom citizenship, where you have been came righteous by your faith, believing in the grace. 
having your belief and faith by grace, which is God's favor, to be made righteous. So now you're supposed to be walking in righteousness. And it says, but many of us walk in unwise, walk in a, let me get another color, walk in an unwise path. We're walking in an unwise, unwise path. We claim citizenship in the new kingdom, but what? Continue to wear the old fashions. We walk, we claim to be citizenships. We came to be Christians or believers and we're in a new kingdom, but we would continue to wear the fashions of the old, meaning we still lying, we still cussing, we still fussing, right? We still lying, we still cheating, but you're supposed to be a Christian. Those, your fruit is not lining up with what you say you are. So it's time to get in this word and start to be transformed, my Lord. It says, in trying to fit in everywhere, that's not your job. You're supposed to let go of the things of this world because it is of the enemy, right? Satan is the king of this world, so that's why we got to let it go. It says, and we can't try to fit in on both sides. You can't fit in in the world and you can't fit in in the kingdom of God. You have to choose one. You cannot serve two masters, right? So it says, we find that we fit in nowhere, you can't be in both at the same time. You can't have one foot in the world and one foot in Christ. Is You just can't do it. It don't work like that. Once you put your foot in the kingdom, you have by default chose to stay in the world. It says we may blend into the old kingdom, but we no longer have what? Proper ID there. You can blend in and try to be cool with your friends because you don't want them rejecting you and you don't want to not be by yourself or get talked about because, oh, you a Bible thumper or you believe in Jesus Christ. You're going to be persecuted. You go be. It's, go, it's coming on both ends. Either it don't matter. But it says we have the proper ID for the new kingdom. But we're slow in fitting in. Why? Because we, we're too scared to let go of the things that's familiar. We know the things of this world like the back of our hands. The kingdom life and the spiritual um, realm is different. It's unknown because we haven't studied it. We haven't, we haven't renewed our mind to it, right? So that's why it's harder because we know the things of this world. So we don't want to, we slow to let it go. We slow to fit in into the kingdom because we don't know how to operate in it yet. And it says, either way, it's an awkward situation to be in, right? You know you want to do right, but you so used to doing what you used to do. And it don't happen overnight. It's a process, y'all. Yes, it's a process. Some things got to take away from you right away. And some things you're going to have to be delivered demon by demon, spirit by spirit, right? Eventually, you'll be like, oh, dang, I, I don't even cuss that much no more. Ooh, I don't even have the desire to smoke. Oh, I don't even want to sleep around no more. You know, it'll come slowly and sometimes it'll come quickly. It all depends. But just keep doing what you're supposed to do. Here we go. It says, what is our reluctancy? Why are we reluctant? Why are we holding back? Why are we not giving God our whole heart, right? Why aren't we releasing and surrendering? It says, why do we hesitate to put on our new clothes? It says because we know we will be, it know we know we will experience rejection. So did Jesus, and no one likes rejection. So that's why you're reluctant. It says, but rejection will come to everyone. So it don't matter. That's a lie from the enemy, either from the world or from the kingdom of heaven. Either way, you're gonna be rejected on both sides. So don't let that be an excuse. It says, the question is not whether we can avoid it, but whose we most want to avoid. Let me read that again. The question is not whether we can avoid it, but whose we most want to avoid. Mm. Wisdom calls for a choice, right? You got to choose. You have to. You have to choose. Trying to dress for both kingdom is not a viable option. You can't serve the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. You just can't do it. You can't. Here we go.
Once you choose the kingdom of darkness, you chose. You chose by default. There ain't no gray areas, black and white. Is it good or evil? Okay, now let's move on to the indeed. And it says, are you reluctant to place both feet firmly in the kingdom of God? And if so, why? Ask yourself, how much of a stronghold do Satan got on you, right? God did not give us the spirit of fear. You can't be scared. Now you just got to say, Holy Spirit, lead and guide me into all truth. Help me understand your word and your ways. That's what you do. You keep saying that. Keep asking. Keep asking. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. I'm telling you. Do you try to hang on to the remnant of your former citizenship? You still want to be over there kicking it with Satan? But you don't know why. It's just familiar. That's all. Let them go. Period. You got to let it go. You got to say, Satan, I can no longer let you control and dominate me. I have been given all authority to tread upon you. If you flee, if you resist the devil, resist the devil he will flee. You just let him go. He going to come to tempt you because he know you have chosen to put two feet in with God. So now he going to come against you with every single thing he can. So be prepared and ready for that. Be prepared. Shed them like an old set of raggedy clothes. Being in the world is like a set of raggedy clothes. Take that mess off, right? Take it off. It ain't cute. The way to settle into your new kingdom and advance in it is to be reclothed or reborn or your mind renewed. You got to put on the mind of Christ. And the only way you're going to know how to do that is by reading God's word. He gives us instructions on how to do everything. Anything pertaining to life and godliness is in the Bible. It's our instruction book. Okay. It says it's a daily process. You see this? Every day you're going to have to ask. It ain't going to come by default. You're going to have to do something. You're going to have to be a co-author um, with God in this a co-partner. He did his part already. He died on the cross. He set us free. He 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 already um gave us freedom. But we have to take it. You have to take it and you have to walk in it and just know I am free. He who sets them free is free indeed, right? It's a daily process. It's something you do daily killing your flesh. Killing your flesh. We deny deceitful desires. That's what you got to do. You got to deny your deceitful desires because what? You are a living sacrifice. So you're sacrificing the things that you would desire to do in the world. But you're saying, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not cursing. I'm not about to lie. I'm not about to steal. I'm not about to covet. I'm not about to cheat because that is not pleasing to God. I'm going to have to deny my deceitful desires, right? And what? saturate ourselves in a new attitude start reading the attributes of god and see how he wants us to be and start to adapt those things he said be courageous he didn't say try to be courageous right he said be it if you're a woman you don't have to try to be a woman you are a woman be it if you're a mother you don't have to well, i'm gonna try to be a mother no you had a child you are a mother be it right just be it and then it says, we become like God in righteousness and holiness. Only when you are reading his word, renewing your mind, is how you're going to adapt the character of Christ. You have to read, y'all. You have to ask the Lord, Lord, give me a spirit to read your word with understanding of your mysteries. You prayer. You have to pray that. You have to ask for the understanding. You have not because you ask not. You need to ask God. That's why in every prayer you hear me say, Lord, give me the spirit because these are all spirits. You need to know that. You know, you need to know that wisdom is a spirit. Understanding is a spirit. Clarity is a spirit. Knowledge is a spirit. Discernment is a spirit. Revelation is a spirit. You have to ask God for these spirits so that you can become more like him holy and righteous because you believe, right? You believe. And it says, there is no greater wisdom than this. Mm, mm, mm. 
We become like God in righteousness and holiness. There is no greater wisdom than this. You can't be no, you can't be more wise than to be like Christ. If you're doing that, you're on the right path and you're going to go in the right direction and all will be well with you. Then your breakthrough will come forth, okay? Then you can start um, living in the blessing and in the promises of God. But long as you got your foot on the other side, they can't come because you got the door open to the enemy and he ain't going to do nothing but come in, kill, steal, and destroy everything that God got for you because you got the door open. Close that door, take off them clothes, Put on your new man and start walking in Christ. All right? This was good. I hope this helps somebody. I hope this helps somebody. Take off them raggedy clothes of that old man and put on your new man. Please do that. Try it. Go take a shower. Put on your new man. Get in this word. Renew your mind and move forward in Christ. Ask for forgiveness and repent and you're going to be all right. In Jesus' name, I'll see you guys next week. God willing, pray for me as I pray for you. Bye-bye now.